Okay, so this gas law practice we're going to do has four questions, okay? The first three are gonna deal with what we covered last week with um, Charles' law and Boyle's law. Sorry. And the fourth one is going to deal with what we are going to encounter um, in section four, so starting today. So when we do the first, after we do the first three problems, um, hold on to it because we'll finish it probably tomorrow, okay? And so that way you've got to practice, some additional practice with all this stuff. Now, before we get into our discussion for today, remember us talking about this? Remember? About the weather? What happened yesterday? Nortados, right? Wasn't that exciting? It was a nice, warm day, textbook set up. And now look at today. Yesterday was a low pressure system. It caused the moisture in the air and the air molecules to rise. We get these clouds. Then we kind of had this high pressure system, cool air, that kind of ramped it up. Because after that storm came through yesterday, there was a significant decrease in temperature outside. So we had that pressure gradient occurring. And now we may not have necessarily um, nice weather today, but it's nice and cool, nothing crazy, no crazy wind. We might have a few occasional rains, light though, nothing like what we saw yesterday. But it's all about what we just learned. And it was really fun driving in it yesterday, right on the leading edge of it. As soon as I got north of um, Sherman, got hit with the hail and it was just exploding off my car. I was like, this is not your typical hail. But my wife um, was on, yeah, Culver's on the north side and she actually watched it move. She got video of it, pretty neat. It's pretty neat. So I got to race a tornado kind of yesterday. It's fun. And so I had to get home. Because <laughs> I was at my grandma's house yesterday and she lives um, I'm trying to give you a point of reference here. Um, you know, like West Side Christian churches, kind of that little bit, even a little further than that, not too far uh, in the neighborhood. And so, as soon as I opened the door, the sirens went off like this. It's going to be fantastic. That's not the first time that's happened to me opening the car door and having sirens go off. But anyway, it was an interesting day yesterday, to say the least. But let's review gas laws. So, Boyle's Law. Again, in Boyle's Law, we hold temperature constant. Remember, water boils at a certain temperature, temperature boils, all right? To mathematically calculate this, we have the formula P1V1 equals P2V2. What we're looking at in Boyle's Law is the relationship between pressure and volume. So we're going to investigate how does the act of um, changing one affect the other. And they have an inverse relationship. So that means as one goes up, the other goes down. Charles's law is the second one of three that we talked about, but really the only, um, the only first two that we're going to calculate. It looks at <coughs> constant pressure and how temperature and volume affect one another. Mostly how temperature affects overall volume. Okay. So, you get the formula of V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now, the, the variables denoted with the subscript 1, those are just, you know, the initial um, settings, if you will. And the ones with the subscript of 2 are the final, what happens, you know, after the change is made. So, um, let's look at our first question here. Okay, let me get this ready to go. Ooh. All right. If I 
Then my life will be a little easier. Are you in the back to see? Because everyone's in the back now. Now I gotta go lighter. Can you see that back there? Okay. All right. So look at the first one here. <clears throat> it says, if you have 45 liters of helium in a balloon at 25 degrees Celsius and increase the temperature of the balloon to 55 degrees Celsius, what will the new volume of the balloon be? <laughs> now, one thing that I want to point out to you is temperature. Okay. When we're doing these calculations, in order to keep in with what we call the ideal gas equation, which um, is what we're going to talk about in section four, you want to make sure that your temperature is in terms of Kelvin. Now, with these particular equations, you don't necessarily have to convert them to Kelvin, but... Um, we're going to anyway, just so we can keep in or get our practice built back up. Cause we've done the conversions between Celsius and Kelvin before. Um, but we're going to use this opportunity to um, practice it again, just to refresh our minds and how we do this. So let's start first turning this around. Let's start listing what we know. Okay. We know that, the volume of a balloon is initially, so V1, it says it is 45 liters, okay? We are told that initially the temperature, so T1, is 25 degrees Celsius. But in order to convert this to Kelvin, we have to add... 273 that's our conversion for this so we get 298 kelvin for our initial temperature and honestly 25 degrees celsius or 298 kelvin that's what we consider standard uh temperature room temperature if you will okay our next bit of information says that we increase the temperature to 55 degrees uh, Celsius. So our new temperature is 55 degrees. So our T2, again, we convert that to Kelvin, 273. And we'll get 328 Kelvin. What we are trying to solve for is what is the new volume of the balloon okay so taking a look at what we know we've got volume and temperature okay <clears throat> so if we look back at the two laws that we are going to use to calculate Boyle's or Charles well we see that temperature is not being held constant but Pressure is assumed to be held constant because we're not told anything different. It doesn't mention anything about pressure, so we're going to assume that it's same. So pressure is being held constant, which means we're going to use Charles's law. Okay? And again, Charles's law, V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And right here, the V2 is what we're trying to solve for. So I need to rearrange this formula to solve for V2. And I'm going to do that by multiplying both sides by T2 so I can get it out of the denominator. And so this allows for those units to cancel. And now I have the formula set up of V2 is equal to <clears throat> V1 T2 over T1. So I'm going to use this setup to help solve. And so now that I have it situated in the correct fashion, I go ahead and start putting in my values that I've already determined. So our V1 was 45 liters. And also your volume in liters is also a pretty good one too. Um, 
Again, that's the unit that you're going to use for the ideal gas equation. So again, in a lot of these questions right now, you don't necessarily have to convert them unless they're just completely different in the problem. Um, but it's good practice if you're given something other than liters to convert to liters. Uh, okay, take that and multiply it by, if I can, by T2, which we calculate as 328 Kelvin, and divide it by T1, which was 298 Kelvin. And so now you see that in this setup, our units of Kelvin are going to cancel, leaving us with units of liter, which is the appropriate for volume. So double check my work. But when you take 45 times 328 and divide it by 298, you should get 50 liters. Is that what you're all getting? You're still calculating, okay. Melissa, is that what you got? Okay, good. So that's our first example of how we use Charles's law. Okay, we're gonna see another one. But next, I wanna move to number two. Okay. Number two says if 22.5 liters of nitrogen at 748 millimeters of mercury are compressed to 725 millimeters of mercury at constant temperature, what is the new uh, volume? So now I'm going to kind of ask a different um, series of questions is just by reading the question itself, what uh, law am I going to use? What do you think? There's a key phrase in there that tells us what we're going to, what law we're going to use. It says, Which slide are you on? This side? I'm not on any slide. No, I'm not on any slide. I'm working on this worksheet. But that's probably easier to see that. But yeah. So looking at number two, it says constant temperature. So we are going to use Boyle's law. So P1 V1 equals P2 V2. So let's list what we have. Okay. We have 748 millimeters of mercury. Now, again, in terms of the ideal gas law, we would have this in atmospheres. But again, as you saw in the previous equation, we don't have to convert it. They'll eventually cancel out or leave us with an appropriate unit. Okay, so we'll just leave it like that for now. So, um, oh yeah, I get the P1 value because it's listed there as um, 748 millimeters of mercury. And then our V1, our initial volume was 22.5 liters. We then compress this gas to where it has a new pressure, P2, of 725 millimeters of mercury. Excuse me. We need to... Um, Actually, that wording is incorrect. Well, I'll address that here in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> so we need to figure out what our new volume is. Okay. Um, so looking at Boyle's law, P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Okay. Again, we are trying to solve for V2 because it says was the new volume. So I'm going to divide both sides by P2. And now I'm going to have the formula set up of V2 is equal to P1 V1 over P2. And so I've got it arranged how I need to. And so my P1 was 748 millimeters of mercury. Our V1 was 22.5 liters. 
And our, <clears throat> excuse me, our P2 was 725 millimeters of mercury. And so again, this allows for our units to cancel out for millimeters of mercury. Our liters gets to stay the same. And then you go ahead and calculate it. Again, I want you to check my calculations, 23.2 liters. What I want you to do, is that, first of all, is that what you, okay. Now, what, what kind of paused me in this is the fact that this is, the word compressed is not a correct term in here, okay? Because obviously we didn't compress it because when you compress something, you make something smaller. So this should say decompressed, D-E in front of compressed, okay? That way, if you go back and review this, it'll make a lot more sense, hopefully, than how it's worded. All right, one more until we get into our new set of notes just for a little bit, and that is number three on the worksheet. A container containing five liters of gas is collected at 100 Kelvin and then allowed to expand to 20 liters. What must the new temperature be in order to maintain the same pressure? So, which law are we using, Boyle's or Charles's, if we're uh, maintaining or constant pressure. What do you think? Did you say, which one did you say? <laughs> what do you think, Alyssa? Charles's. We use Charles's law because it's Charles is maintaining constant pressure. So that means we have a V1 over T1 equal to V2 over T2. <clears throat> now, what do we know? We know that our initial volume was five liters. We know that our initial temperature was 100 Kelvin. We know that we allowed the, um, the container to expand to a new volume of 20 liters. And we need to figure out what the new temperature would be in order to maintain constant pressure, okay? So in this case, we are solving for T2. So there's a, an additional step in rearranging this. So first I'm gonna, I need to get this out of the denominator. So I'm gonna first going to um, multiply both sides by T2, allows that to cancel out. So I got T2 times V1 over T1 equal to um, V2. But now <clears throat> I have a situation to where I still don't have T2 by itself, okay? So again, I'm going to multiply both sides by T1. Again, there's a couple different extra steps on here, okay? And now I've got T2 times V1 equal to V2 times T1. And my last step to reorganize this equation is I need to divide both sides by V1 so that these cancel out, and I'm left with T2 is equal to V2 over T1 divided by V1. So now I've got my T2 set up and getting ready and ready to solve for. And I just plug in my values of V2, which is 20.0 liters times T1, which is 100 Kelvin, divided by V1, which was five liters. And this time, the liters unit cancels out. And so plugging that in, you should get 400 
Kelvin. Let me see if I've got a new marker. Yay, I do. Is that what everyone got? Okay. <clears throat> so again, I just wanted to do a couple of practice problems with this. Um, hold on to this because number four is what we'll do tomorrow after we've uh, completed section four, okay? So you can store those away nicely. And we are going to hop into our notes. Okay. I'll give you another few moments. All right. So far in this chapter, we have seen that volume is um, um, indirectly proportional to, uh, to pressure, which is Boyle's law. We've seen that volume is directly proportional to temperature, Charles's law. And that volume is directly proportional to the amount of moles present of gas. That is Avogadro's law. So seeing that all of these variables are all proportional in some manner to volume, we get this. Volume is proportional to the number of moles times temperature divided by pressure. <clears throat> and so that's the beginning of our, what's known as the ideal gas law, or the ideal gas equation. But, in order to really connect all these variables together, we have to include what's known as a constant, okay? For our use in the ideal gas equation, we have what's known as the constant of proportionality when we are dealing with gases. And it is given the variable capital R. Now, this version of the constant of proportionality is the one that we are going to utilize utilize most okay these are all variations of r but again this value in units is what we're going to use mostly so this is a number we need to get stored up in our brains 0 0.08206 and the units that go along with it are liters times atmosphere per mole times Kelvin. So again, that's why I was really wanting you to know that we have to convert to Kelvin. We have to have our volume in liters and our pressure is atmospheres. Now we did, we did quite a bit of conversions last week with atmospheres. So those all going back to the pressure equivalent slide that we talked about early in the chapter. So what we get is the following equation. Pivner. Pivner is the ideal gas equation that we are going to use to solve for what we call an ideal gas given certain situations. So <clears throat> this is the all important setup right here. And so if you think about it, just like any other formula, we can solve for any of the variables with the exception of R, because it's a constant, okay? So, you don't have to add this note because uh, I, I had that statement up top of this slide here for um, past reasons, but standard temperature and pressure, these are values that you need to know, okay? Temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Pressure is one atmosphere. And the molar volume of a gas is 22.41 liters. So what this means is the gas is at some or at same conditions, density is directly related to molar mass. Smaller molar mass, less dense the gas. Okay. So that's an important part to know moving forward as well. So let's take a look 
at an example here. We'll talk about the sample before, uh, and then we'll call it a day. And so um, we can just take a look at this. So read along with me if you can up here. It's kind of a lengthy one. It says calcium carbonate, which is the principal compound in limestone, decomposes upon heating to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. A sample of calcium carbonate is decomposed and the carbon dioxide is um, collected in a 250 milliliter flask. After decomposition is complete, the gas has a pressure of 1.3 atmospheres at a temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. How many moles of CO2 gas were generated? Okay, so here's how we go about solving this. First, we need to think about what information we have. So we are given the volume, okay, of 250 milliliters, okay, the volume of the flask. So what do you think we're going to have to do in a, in a moment to that volume unit? We're going to have to convert it from, excuse me, milliliters to liters, okay? We are given pressure of 1.3 atmospheres. Well, we're already given our pressure in the correct unit of atmospheres. And we're given the temperature of 31 degrees Celsius, which again, we'll have to convert to Kelvin. And we are asked to calculate how many moles are present of CO2 that was collected. So in terms of our Pivner equation, that is our N value. So I get here, get here, get here. So again, what we know, we know our volume was 250 mils. We have to convert that to um, liters. And so in order to convert from milliliters to liters, you do this. You have 250 milliliters. One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters, okay? And so we get 0 0.25 liters. Pressure is already given in atmospheres of 1.3. And temperature needs to be changed from 31 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, so you add 273. To the 31, you get 304 Kelvin. So now, we take Pivner, and we solve for N. So we are going to divide both sides by RT, and we get the equation of N is equal to PV over RT. So once we've got that arranged, we plug in our values. Pressure was 1.3 atmospheres. Volume was 0 0.250 liters. R here is 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin and multiply by our temperature of 304 Kelvin, okay? <clears throat> now, if you look at here, we have a denominator within a denominator, okay? So what we have to do here when we have a denominator in a denominator, the second denominator is actually moved up top which allows us to cancel our Kelvin. And these are gonna cancel as well. That means our mole value, our mole unit, is the only one remaining in the numerator. So after we've taken all of our values, multiplied our pressure times our volume, and our uh, constant times our temperature, we get an N value of 0 0.013 mole of CO2. Again, these are, at, um, these are if these gases behave, as we say, ideally, okay? Which is, and we say ideal, meaning a perfect.
perfect world, a perfect scenario. Okay. Now tomorrow, what we're going to do is we are going to look at this practice exercise first thing. And then after we've done this example, we're going to do question number four of the worksheet before getting back into um, the remaining part of section four notes, okay? So that is it for today. We'll pause.